Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Carl Demetria and I'm here to talk about the Australasian Triage Scale for our uh, residents who are uh, who act as triage officers at the emergency department. So this is the reference uh, and I am obligated to uh, show this slide because of the copyright associated uh, with the reference but this is also the same uh, reference used by the Department of Health in their latest uh, manual for emergency department management so uh, triage came from the French word trier which means to pick or sort and its purpose is to ensure that the level and quality of care that is delivered to the community is commensurate with objective clinical criteria. So there is an objectiveness in the decision to triage patients. There are three primary triage decisions. If you under triage, you prolong the waiting time for the patient being triaged, which will lead for, uh, to an adverse outcome. Of course, what we really want is the correct or expected triage decision. However, in some cases, you also uh, over triage, meaning that you assign a higher triage category to a patient. And although this shortens the waiting time for that particular patient, it also means that there's a longer waiting time for other patients at the emergency department. So, this is uh, the Australasian triage scale and we have five categories. The category one is your immediately life-threatening uh, cases or patients that have immediate, immediately life-threatening conditions. Category two would be your imminently life-threatening. Category three would be your potentially life-threatening or important time-critical treatment or severe pain. Fourth would be uh, potentially life serious or situational urgency or significant complexity. And category five is your less urgent cases. And the categories are important because you have an associated um, maximum waiting time. For category one, you need to treat these patients immediately. Category two patients will... Uh, have a maximum waiting time of 10 minutes. Category 3 would be uh, 30 minutes. Category 4 would be 60 minutes. And category 5 would, would be 120 minutes. This is the recommended triage method. And uh, the first step is you uh, assess for safety hazards when a patient presents to in uh, at the triage. The second step is assessment. You can either do a quick evaluation if you feel that the patient might not be stable. But of course, we would need a full assessment that would include your chief complaint, the appearance of the patient, airway, breathing, circulation, disability, and other uh, factors. The third step would be to differentiate predictors of poor outcome from other data collected during the triage assessment so if you see that there are uh, warning signs depending on your clinical experience you would be able to make a judgment if the patient requires a higher triage category number four or step four would be to identify patients who have evidence of or at a high risk of physiological instability so even if the vital signs at the triage are still stable, they might present with the physiological instability which will uh, make their vital signs unstable and it will just uh, take a matter of time. Number five is to assign an appropriate uh, uh, triage category in response to the data that you have collected. And number six is to uh, direct the patient to the appropriate staff and then number seven or step seven is where where your uh, emergency department model of care proceeds so the first steps 
the first step, I'm sorry, uh, deals with the assessment of environmental hazards. There is always a risk in leaving your the triage area to assess your patients in a vehicle. And it is recommended that if you have space at the triage, you assess them at the triage and not inside the vehicle. Uh, this is a reminder to never place yourself in a situation in which additional help cannot be mobilized. So if there is no choice and you have to assess inside the vehicle, you would uh, probably make sure that uh, there is a, a clear path for you to to be mobile and to uh, uh, escape the vehicle if needed. So that is just a basic safety and environment check. For the patient's airway, you have to check for patency and consider if you need to uh, do precautions for the cervical spine, especially for trauma patients. Uh, triage officers would uh, want to consider category one if the airway is occluded if there is an immediate risk to the patient's airway or if you hear stridor which means that the occlusion is 75 percent or greater uh, patients who have uh, who demonstrate evidence of respiratory dysfunction might warrant to have uh, a uh, high triage category and please do not forget to check for hypoxemia uh, using your uh, 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 blood oxygen monitors at the triage so circulation is assessed through the blood pressure heart rate pulse as well as the characteristics of the pulse and evidence of severe hemodynamic compromise for instance, hypotension, severe hypertension, tachycardia, and bradycardia would warrant a high triage category. Disability is uh, assessed using your uh, AVPU scale, alert, uh, verbal, um, and uh, unresponsive, uh, your uh, Glasgow Coma Scale, and your activity level. Uh, please assess your patient's for any loss or any derangement of consciousness as well as the patient's pain level. You might also need to consider other data in uh, the triage, no? at the triage. Uh, for patients who have extremes of age wherein uh, physiological characteristics are different, uh, you might want to consider uh, up triaging them if even if they are uh, relatively stable because of their uh, age there are also high risk conditions such as the presence of a chronic illness cognitive impairment uh, cog communication deficit multiple comor comorbidities poisoning and severe pain which would also make you consider uh, the uh, up triaging these patients for trauma patients, it is really uh, important for you to uh, determine the mechanism of injury, especially for a vehicular crash. Um, if there are other uh, extenuating circumstances that would increase the sense of urgency for treating uh, th these trauma patients, then it's, it would serve you best to consider this in your triage decision. The presence of rash might uh, indicate either an infectious process or an allergy and you have to combine this with uh, other uh, clinical data to make uh, an informed decision at the triage so in summary these are adult physiological predictors for the uh, australasian triage scale um, the pediatric physiological predictors are um, are kind of different, but uh, um, we will uh, post uh, the the tables for your reference as well. Um, so as you can see here, uh, for category one, the airway is obstructed or partially obstructed. Breathing would be ha uh, be seen as se uh, severe respiratory distress or 
or absent respiration or hyper hypoventilation and circulation would be demonstrated by severe hemodynamic co compromise absent circulation or uncontrolled hemorrhage and your disability would be reflected by a Glasgow coma score of uh, less than 9 so uh, for either of these uh, you might want to consider category 1 and down the line you would see that uh, for A, B, C, D there is uh, uh, an improvement as compared to the, the lower category so category 5 it can wait uh, for 120 minutes uh, before being treated. Uh, you would see that the airway is patent, no respiratory distress, no hemodynamic compromise, and normal GCS. So, 4 and 5, these are the patients that are uh, uh, non, uh, non urgent, no? while your category 1 and 2. And even three, you might consider as uh, emergent patients no? in the in the previous uh, triage system uh, that is in our uh, uh, existing policy. So I hope that uh, this short uh, primer uh, will give you an idea on the Australasian triage scale, and uh, we hope that. Uh, you, uh, you would be using this in your triage decisions uh, we will be uh, documenting this in the triage registry form and uh, if you have any questions you can approach the office of the assistant hospital director for health operations or uh, members of the uh, emergency department committee and we will discuss uh, your triage concerns in the appropriate venue. So thank you for your attention and we hope that uh, uh, this uh, will enable you to uh, properly decide on the category of our patients and that we treat our patients with the compassion and the care that they deserve. Thank you very much.